Good morning everyone. This is Madhusudan Raj, your host. And today I want to discuss the political matters that are going on in India right now in the expectation of the upcoming election in uh, probably May or June. So we are seeing the survey reports, uh, the pollsters are forecasting that the uh, National Democratic Alliance of Narendra Modi government will likely win the majority in the upcoming elections, but they are forecasting that the number tally will basically, is likely to go down. Uh, we saw that Prime Minister Narendra Modi was bragging about uh, winning 400 plus uh, seats in these uh, parliamentary elections. Uh, but then the surveys are showing that the numbers might not be more than 300. They can be less than 300 also. And they are showing a, a big gain for uh, Congress party. Their tally might go up from uh, 40 to something like 71, 80. And their uh, United Progressive Alliance might get uh, more than 170 seats. So I'm sure uh, Narendra Modi and his uh, BJP party, they all are in some kind of a panic because after bragging that they will win 400 seats, if the results are anything less than 400, it will be, uh, it will not matter to Narendra Modi because, you know, he's just going to enjoy power for five more years uh, before his political, I mean, he's going to be there as long as he can because he has nothing else to do. Uh, he has lived his life uh, uh, parasitically like this for all his life. He became the RSS member when he was eight. And the institution is what is basically giving him his sustenance. So he will not care if he will, uh, he will continue to run for the political position as long as he's alive. Uh, he is never going to retire, we all know that. But anyway, uh, it will be like a um, uh, little bit of kind of uh, embracing embracement moment for the BJP and everyone else because Modi has already bragged that they might get uh, 400 seats. So what he has started doing is he knows that there are so many factions of the Indian society uh, who are not happy with whatever he's doing. And he has, he's, you know, because he's a typical politician, a Machiavellian a politician, and he's a textbook sociopath. So he will use everything and, you know, everyone to gain political power, uh, whether that is uh, using the Hindu deity uh, Ram, or as we will see, uh, the, you know, uh, former prime minister Rao. So to, you know, kind of uh, make these groups happy, Narendra Modi has conferred this highest civilian award of Bharat Ratna to Lal Krishna Dwani first, whom he used and threw away. Uh, remember, Lal Krishna Dwani was the guy who saved Narendra Modi from a disaster uh, during the Gujarat Godra riot when Adil Bihari Bajpayee, the former Prime Minister of India, he was very unhappy with the leadership of Narendra Modi and he wanted him to resign from his position on the moral grounds that he was not able to stop this riots which killed like 2000 and more or we don't know the number you know muslims uh but lal krishna Dwani stopped uh bajpay from sacking narendra modi so he's basically the mentor of narendra modi another guy who was helping him uh, was uh murli manohar joshi but these guys were forgotten for the last 10 years, but now then the elections are coming up and Modi knows that inside his, you know, BJP party, the faction of Adwani, they don't, they're not happy with him. So to kind of, you know, co-op them, to make them happy, he gave uh, this Bharat Ratna to Lal Krishna Adwani when he's at the end of his life, he's like 94 or 95 right now. To do the same thing, uh, because there are so many farmers, uh, you know, are angry at him because of his policies of uh, stopping the minimum, you know, support price MSP for the farm products, as well as trying to privatize and give all the farmlands in the hand of corporate tycoons, the fastest tycoons like the Adanis and the Ambanis, during the farm bills, which they had to, which he had to, you know, take it back when there was so much of uh, protest from the farmer. Even right now, 
the farmers are having some kind of rally towards Delhi because they're protesting against his draconian farm policies. So he's trying to make them happy instead of doing something concrete, which he cannot do because he's a sociopathic uh, fascist dictator. What he's doing is trying to play with the psyche. His demon possessed is trying to play with the emotions of these people. So he conferred Bharat Ratna on the agricultural scientist who is kind of credited uh, for bringing the so-called green revolution in India, the agricultural revolution in India, MS Sab Swaminathan. And another prime minister who was, you know, kind of farmers friendly, Chaudhary Choran Singh, whom, you know, many people don't even know, he gave uh, Bharat Ratna award yesterday to these two people plus in Congress party itself, you know, there are, of course, a lot of problems. So he's trying to, you know, show off as if Congress party is all about the Nehru Gandhi family and how this Nehru Gandhi family has done a lot of injustices to their own people. So, you know, to highlight that thing that I am fighting against this dynastic politics, Narendra Modi conferred Bharat Ratna uh, onto a former prime minister of India who brought the economic reform with uh, Manmohan Singh, who was a finance minister back then and became the prime minister later on for two terms under Congress, uh, Narsimha Rao. <clears throat> so a lot of, you know, elections are coming in Andhra Pradesh and Rao was from Andhra Pradesh. So Narendra Modi is, you know, trying to, you know, uh, tackle all these things on multiple fronts so that he's, he can secure his re-election in uh, upcoming parliamentary election. But these things are nothing, you know, as I said, Narendra Modi is a sociopath. He is a fascist dictatorial ruler. Everything matters. Everything is a is a is for use for him to gain political power for himself. Giving this Bharat Ratna to Lal Krishna Dwani, or to Rahul, you know, or to uh, Narsimha Rao, or to uh, Chaudhary Charan Singh, or to M S Swaminathan, or building the Ram Temple, for example, in Ayodhya. All these are political moves. Uh, they have zero meaning whatsoever. Concrete meaning he's not doing it because it is the right thing to do you know uh, or it is something that is you know uh is you know going to benefit the country or benefit the people he's doing everything because it is, these things are going to benefit only him in willing his you know political power back because he has you know uh kind of uh, convinced himself that what he is doing is the right thing to do and he's some kind of a savior of the people so he has this uh, thought going into his mind that he's the one, the chosen one, or whatever you want to call it. And that is why he wants to secure power for a lifetime. He wants to become the dictator for a lifetime. And that is the reason why he he's doing everything. All his actions are basically directed only towards one goal, and that is securing his real action. Because he's seeing the surveys are showing that his numbers will go down. Uh, especially in the south states where he is now focusing too much in Kerala and in Tamil Nadu and in Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and all that Karnataka. So he's trying everything to, you know, win back support from the states. Uh, I don't think that is going to work, but that's what Narendra Modi is all about. So this Bharat Ratna award is nothing but a political move and I'm sure uh, uh, people are smart enough to know that. Well, I'm, I'm just kidding. You know, people are not smart enough to know all these things. Uh, they are going to vote on the line on which they have been voting so far. Uh, hopefully, people will see that Narendra Modi, all these uh, moves of giving Bharat Ratna to this and that person is not going to better their life. It is only going to create uh, more problems in future. Because remember, after winning election, Narendra Modi is just going to throw everybody under the bus. And he is going to do whatever he is supposed to do. He is an RSS man. He is a product of RSS. And his ultimate goal is Hindu Rashtra. So that is where he is you know, heading right now. That is where he is taking uh, the Indian nation state right now. And ultimately when he will try to do that. It is going to explode. And we can see already. you know, uh, Things are exploding already. They, they are demolishing one mosque after another. So after building the Ram Temple in Ayodhya, now they're going after Varanasi and Kasi Mathura, you know, mosque, the uh, Gyanwapi Mosque and other mosque in Mathura and Kasi. They said we want them also. They are openly threatening. They're saying that two more, if you give two more, we will not demand more. I heard that many people are 
are saying that even Ajmer Sharif, the Khwaja Mohyuddin Chusti's mosque, was a you know temple over there. And then they bulldozed some very old, like a 500, 600 year old mosque in Delhi without asking anyone, the, uh, without asking the Archaeological Survey of India. And few days back in Uttarakhand, Haldwani, they demolished another mosque saying that it is illegal construction. And that has started a lot of riots there. All, I think uh, six or seven people have already died. This is all. This is all suits Narendra Modi. This is what his uh, modus operandi is: divide and rule. So, uh, but the but the thing that I want to discuss is that the political choices that Indians face are are uh, very grim. I mean, uh, there is no real choice that something that will better the country. On one side, you have somebody like the fascist dictator, sociopath Narendra Modi. But on the other side, also the choices are not very good. Like, I'm I'm sure anybody you know who will come back to power other than Narendra Modi will be a better thing for uh, the country. But I don't think so. The forces are the forces which are you know now under motion are going to stop. Uh, the subcontinent is going to go towards its disintegrated you know historical nature. But you know what I'm saying is the 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 political options are very very grim for the Indians. On one side you have Narendra Modi, on the other side you have Socialist Congress Party, which is you know socialism is never going to help the country. Uh, Manmohan Singh was uh, an exceptional case, and he was an economist, and he understood the importance of free trade and uh, free trade internally as well externally, and he. He, he couldn't do that, but he opened up the market enough so the prosperity, a little bit of prosperity can come into the country and lift the standard of living of uh, the common man. But he's no longer there. Uh, you know, the Gandhian uh, philosophy or the Congress's philosophy is of socialism. So Rahul Gandhi and all these other people are only going to, you know, bring in more reservation, this and reservation that. And uh, everybody's talking about OBC and this and that. Nobody's talking about uh, lowering the taxes, for example. Nobody's talking about reducing the controls and regulations on the economy or opening up the trade again because Modi has erected so much of uh, protectionist measures. Nobody's talking about how they are going to bring in the competition so uh, India can have more you know, entrepreneurs who can, you know, serve the customers instead of just having Adanis and Ambanis and Tatas and Billas, four or five, uh, you know, fascist tycoons. Uh, nobody is talking about giving more freedom to people. You know, Congress is all about socialism. Kejriwal's party is all about socialism. He's even a bigger dictator. And, and all the local parties are all wedded to the socialist ideology. So, even if you want to vote, for whom you are going to vote? I mean, the political options are all very grim. And ultimately, I think uh, the country is uh, going towards the disintegration process. So the northern party, the northern states, the Hindi cow belt states will continue to vote for the BJP. And the southern states will be forced to do something different for themselves now. Uh, we will see what they're going to do because ultimately even in those states there is no unity ultimately when it comes to India uh, caste rules everything instead of religion Narendra Modi has weaponized religion but the ground reality of India is caste so there are Brahmins and there are you know, Dalit communities in the southern states also and I don't think so the Brahmins are going to give up their power and go along with uh, the you know the demand of you know southern independent uh, uh, states so they will try to control the position in delhi the centralized power they will try to keep the state for themselves so so i don't think so it is going to help uh, too much so uh, nothing is going to come out of this election results and whoever will come to power the the country is you know con condition will continue to disintegrate deteriorate and you know as i said it is going in the direction of violence and bloodbath and the ultimate disintegration because i see the 
you know signs of violence propping up because uh, i was just reading today morning some bjp minister in karnataka was asking openly publicly that they should pass some kind of a law which allows them to kill the congress leaders who are talking about separate south india for example so he is calling them traitors and he wants some kind of a law which will legitimize killing them so the, this is how the violence starts you know somebody starts talking about it the idea is in the public domain some you know botch mind person will carry out the ideas into action and then it will start shooting wars and these and that and assassinations and all that and from there once it starts somewhere something will break and then there will be no going back anyway i wanted to talk about the political move you know kind of uh uh political matters that are going on in india and uh, where the indian nation state is going it is going in the direction of its disintegration uh results will not matter too much right now because for modi what matters is uh, his lifetime powers and he doesn't care whether he's going to stay there or not he's going he's having fun he's enjoying you know this moments of his life he deserved nothing but he got so much more than that he was able to successfully manipulate and fool the indian people and by using religion or whatever he could and he is just uh, living his life every day having fun at the taxpayers money so he will just even if he goes away history will understand what damage he did but then he as i said he's just a a a, a reflection of the underlying culture the nature of the subcontinent indian subcontinent because ultimately people are voting for him even if uh uh we talk about manipulation of votes i don't think so the votes are manipulated at at that bigger scale maybe here and there a little bit it's people who are voting for him they want him to be there you know they are expressing their heart's desire of converting the northern states basically of converting india into hindu rashtra and that is why even when modi will not be there the momentum will continue the underlying you know desires of people will go in the direction of disintegration of the country anyway uh, i just wanted to discuss all these things and uh, let you know uh what i think about all these issues so thank you very much for listening to me and i'll come back again and discuss uh, something about the indian history what could have happened i want to do some kind of uh, counterfactual historical analysis of india what could have happened if the britishers did not do what they did in 1947 when they went out but that for the next time thank you for listening me goodbye i'll see you next time